Plotning Slav TV. In recent times, tensions in South Africa have reached a boiling point as the anti-white South African government moves forward with its hostile agenda to remove white landowners. They killed one of us, we killed how many whites? We killed the children, we killed the women, we killed their dogs, we killed their cats. We kill anything that comes before us. Following that recent speech, in which Black Land First President Andil Maxitama urged his supporters to kill white people and their pets, the South African Human Rights Commission was flooded with complaints as violent anti white rhetoric reached alarming levels. I have declared war on the white establishment. Although many South African politicians have long fetishized about the killing and violent removal of white landowners from their homes, these fantasies may in fact soon become a reality following the government's decision to set an official date for their long-awaited white farmer land grab. The South African president Cyril Ramaphosa has made land distribution from white farmers to disadvantaged citizens a flagship policy, and the economic freedom fighters politician Hlangiwe Makalifi has openly told white people that their time is up. Close to Johannesburg, the city of Ekerheli is already preparing a test case of the proposed land grab, with the city's mayor calling on hundreds of acres of land to be taken away from white owners without any kind of compensation. At present, the National Assembly has decided to form a committee whose primary objective will be to draft an amendment to Section 25 of the South African Constitution, which would ultimately allow the government to take homes from the people and refuse to pay them compensation. These aggressive reparation efforts will essentially aim to reverse what black South Africans refer to as the original sin of colonization, despite the fact that many of the white landowners being targeted are those living on land which was vacant even in the pre-colonial era. Despite the continued murders, violence and threats taking place in South Africa, the plight of white South Africans has been completely ignored by the mainstream media, which is taking every opportunity it gets to smear those who bring these issues to light. A few months back, even Donald Trump was accused by lamestream news for parroting far-right conspiracies of white genocide in South Africa, despite the fact that South African government officials are openly calling for the slaughter of whites on national television. Even the president of South Africa has accused Trump of being ill-informed on South Africa's land debate, claiming that Trump was legitimizing conspiracy theories presented by various fringe groups in the US. This same media, which spends hours bashing and lambasting the first lady for wearing her oppressive colonial era wardrobe in Africa, clearly sees no interest in reporting on the real oppression taking place on that same continent. Mainstream media has also continually stayed silent on the gruesome murders of white South Africans in rural areas, and particularly farmers, simply because white victims and threatened white minorities don't exactly fit into their classic narrative of oppression. To give you an example, ABC News released an official report on South Africa a few months back, in which it questioned whether or not the murders of innocent Boer farmers should be considered a crime at all, or simply just a punishment for the evil oppressors. Major news sources have also conveniently failed to mention time and time again that farmers in South Africa are the lifeblood of the economy and that taking away farmlands has had devastating economic effects on other African nations which implemented similar land reforms. There's been about two farm attacks every day and two farm murders every week uh, in South Africa. Outside of South Africa, support for the proposed land grab has been endorsed by many EU globalists, and particularly Theresa May, who stated on numerous occasions that she supports land distribution in South Africa as long as it's democratic. The Belgian government has also been a strong supporter of the South African land reform and has committed 30 million euros to ensure that the process is balanced and smooth and to secure a role for South Africa in educating the world about its stance on land. In reality, the EU's support for land distribution in South Africa has nothing to do with upholding democracy and everything to do with creating future foreign investment opportunities in the country. Oddly enough, the EU hasn't learned that supporting land reforms in Africa ultimately leads to severe economic downfalls, hyperinflation and food shortages, as witnessed in Zimbabwe following President Mugabe's land grabs during the last two decades. Although tensions in South Africa have been mounting for quite some time now, the newly proposed amendment to the constitution, which aims to set the government's white land grab plan in motion, may in fact be the final straw for whites in South Africa, as the country is pushed into sheer chaos. As the South African government continues its violent anti-white rhetoric and its open call for the slaughter of innocent citizens, the mainstream media has chosen to ignore the devastating reality taking place in the country and muffle the people's desperate cries for help. 
EU politicians, who are normally obsessed with aiding oppressed minority groups and punishing the oppressors, have willfully turned a blind eye to the suffering of whites in South Africa and are instead aiding those who seek to destroy the very democratic principles which the EU prides itself on. Having witnessed the devastating effects of land grabs in other African nations, one can only wonder who the land reforms in South Africa will benefit and how whites will manage to survive in a country which openly calls for their destruction.